How we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. Now on today's show we're going to take a look at the back pages and what is going on in the world of football. And the last piece of news involves Arsenal. First game of pre-season and the first defeat of pre-season. I represent my fucking self. How we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. That's right. So the first place we're going to start the back pages and what is going on in the world of football and the paper talk. Now the Daily Telegraph, Marcus Rashford could miss the first two months of the new Premier League season after deciding to push ahead with surgery on a long-standing shoulder problem. And you know what? I think for himself, that will probably be the best thing. Take a couple of months out and get yourself back 100% fit. Speaking to Manchester United fans and Marcus Rashford himself has admitted last season he was never 100% right. There was always something wrong. And I think that Manchester United fans and Marcus Rashford himself, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, everybody connected, would rather have 100% Marcus Rashford than a 75%. Take a couple of months out, have a break and, um, you know, come back stronger for it. Um, Tottenham have made Southampton striker Danny Ings their priority summer signing um, with a firm belief that he can play an attack alongside Harry Kane um, who they remain determined to keep at the club. Um, Danny Ings, if he does come into Spurs, I genuinely think that will be the replacement for Harry Kane. I cannot see him staying at Spurs. If anything, the defeat by England in the final has probably made it worse for Spurs. Because now Harry Kane still has no trophy. He has no winner's medal. And it's only going to further his appetite to go and get that winner's medal. To get trophies in his hands. Maybe if England would have been, you know, beaten Italy. He could have looked at it and gone. Okay, I've got that first piece of silverware. Let's see another season at Spurs and what happens. But I don't think so now. Um, a petition to permanently ban racists from football matches in England has reached almost 1 million signatures in just 24 hours. And that's very good. And um, I completely agree with this. If you are found guilty of some of the stuff that we've seen over the past few days and the messages towards um, Bakayo Saka, Marcus Rashford and Jadon Sancho, then yes, be banned for life. From football, all football. It's that simple. Um, you know what you're doing. You know what you're saying. So punish them in the harshest way possible for life. No exceptions, no return. I'm sorry, but yeah, I agree with this. And um, whether it you know remains to be seen whether they would do it, I don't know. But yeah, I agree with it wholeheartedly. That's for sure. Um, the Daily Mail have said that the Football Association will offer Saka, Sancho and Rashford um, the option of pursuing criminal action against the online accounts that targeted them uh, with sickening racial abuse. Again, agree with it. But the one issue that you're going to face is that um, if they're not in this country, then I don't know what legal action you can take against them. Um I remember there was um, a story about um, Jamie Vardy and uh, I think it was at the time when Leicester um, had won the league and his wife had posted a photo um, with his daughter and there was a load of sickening just like trust me like it was just beyond all comprehension what was being said and um, they obviously, you know, went to pursue legal action, um, traced the accounts and um, yeah, they weren't in England and there was nothing that they could actually do. Um, so, yeah, that's the only worry that if somebody, you know, is not in this country, what are their rules like? Are they able to be, you know, prosecuted from, you know, their country or I don't know what this actual situation is, but... Yeah, um, you've got to hope that the people that have done it are in this country and um, they will have to, you know, face the consequences for their actions. And um, one thing I will say is that um, if you end up with a prison sentence, 
Let's see how much you're running your mouth inside. <laughs> Trust me, you won't be running your mouth like you were online and you know when you're in prison. Trust me on that. Um, fans at Premier League stadiums may now need a COVID passport for the first round of matches in mid-August under new guidance being drawn up by the government. Um, and masks have not been ruled out in stadiums. I was expecting this. I think we was all expecting it. I think we knew it was going to happen. And um, I think it is what it is. Um, I'm quite fortunate in some respects because I've had two jabs and everything else. And I'm all up to date. And, you know, I can get all these passports to go to events and stuff like that. So, yeah, it is what it is. So that's pretty much it for the back pages. Um and yeah, there's not really much going on in terms of transfers. Jadon Sancho um, is having his medical at Manchester United, but that's a deal that we already knew, you know, was going through once the Euros had finished um, and everything else. Daniel Sturridge, on a side note as well, um, is training with uh, Real Mallorca. Um, it'd be good to see him get back into football. He's still got a lot to give. It's just injuries that have ruined him. And um, it'd be nice to see him get somewhere and, you know, get a bit more time and uh, play in, um, you know, instead of being in the treatment room, but we'll wait and see. So, yeah, last piece of news involves Arsenal. First game back in pre-season, first defeat of pre-season against Hibernian. Shocking. Absolutely shocking. Now, I've seen a lot of people talking about it's pre-season and if about minutes and fitness and all of this and... No. It's really not because what I'm seeing there or what I saw there was a continuation of the same crap that I'd seen last season. There's players there that shouldn't be playing. There's players there that we're actively trying to get rid of. They shouldn't be playing. And um, it's just poor losing to Hibs. No disrespect to them, but we should not be losing to Hibs. Really? We had so many chances, don't get me wrong, and Pepe even missed the penalty, but my word, we were dreadful. And um, it was compounded by the first goal. Um, Arthur Okonkwu, um, who just signed pro contracts only last week, made his debut, and the first goal was an absolute howler. Um, he dropped across just before that as well. He looked a bag of nerves. And um, I feel so sorry for the boy, but... Um, horrendous error but you're looking at the starting 11 and you can't sit there and make excuses I'm sorry Cedric at right back Kalazinak at left back why is he playing why is Kalazinak playing actively trying to get rid of him don't put him in a shirt again what are you training him for what are you getting him prepared for another club really Pablo Mari uh, the young lad Clark who I thought had a decent first half to be fair um, Reese Nelson Mohamed El Nenny Maitland Niles William. On a side note there, William. He looked overweight. I'm not even joking. He looked overweight. Like he'd put a few pounds on and come back unfit. Looks so disinterested. Eddie Nketia Abameyang. That is a good enough starting 11 to beat Hibernian. End of. Nketia missed an absolute sitter. Another player that shouldn't be here. This is what winds me up. Balogun just signed a new contract. Clearly the future of Arsenal in terms of the striking role and everything. Eddie Nketiah are clearly trying to get rid of him. Why is Nketiah starting ahead of Balogun? Balogun should be the one that's starting. Nketiah should be the one at home. You know? You're looking at the substitutes. You had um, Cole Hine, Emil Smith-Rowe, uh, Jack Henry Francis, Omar Rekic, um, Balogun, um, Amari Hutchinson, Nicola Pepe, Alexandre Lacazette, Thomas Partey, Hector Bellerin. Now, Bellerin, another one. If reports are to be believed and he said that he wants to leave, why are you playing him? Why is he there? No. So when Partey, Lacazette, Pepe, um, Emil Smith Rowe, who scored incidentally as well, you know, we're all coming on in the second half. You're telling me that ain't a squad and a team that's good enough to be beating Hibernian? Are you mad? It was poor. It was poor, man. Seriously, absolutely dreadful, dreadful performance all round from Arsenal. And uh, we start as we mean to go on, as they say. Yeah, great. And I know that you're going to look at pre-season and say, don't read too much in it and everything. But 
it's a bit hard not to read into it when it's the same as what it was. We need signings big time. And this only emphasizes how much we need those signings. We need to make them and we need to make them now. And not two or three. I'm talking five or six, clearly. And we need five or six gone, in the bin, done. Please, please, please. Do you know what I mean? I've had such a nice summer, so stress-free. And already I'm feeling so stressed out. And it's Arsenal again. Thank you very much. So there we go. That is it for today's DT's Daily. As usual, let me know in the comment section what you think about today's topics. If you're new around here, hit the subscribe button, smash a like on this video, and I will see you a lot soon. I'm out of here.